and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi, folks. I'm Bob Shaw, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. We're the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Today, we're going to talk about flat foot correction, learn best footwear purchase to stop pain. So this, I, I think in most cases, Brad, if you have a tendency towards flat feet, you need to correct it through your shoe wear. I mean, it's very difficult to correct through exercise. Right, so right. Sometimes yeah. you can, but most often you're going to need some Yeah, help. you need that, that mechanical support. By the way, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on Stay Healthy, Fit Pain, we upload every day. Also, join us on our website, bobandbrad.com, because we're always giving something away. Ah. Why, now we're giving away. This is fantastic. This is the Thermatex Infrared Heating System. Uh, this is the platinum one. Yes. Uh, it's got nice, it's got straps that you can put on and you can actually wear it. Um, you can actually use it for your feet. You can put your foot on top oh, of it. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. You can use it in pretty much any part of the body. And it gives off heat that's over 2.36s. Three six inches. Two point three six inches, yeah, Bob, right. Versus so. skin deep. It's definitely going to get into the joints and those muscles where it needs to be. So you can go to Bob and Brad on Facebook, and you'll find it there. Also, or if you want a short version of us, go to Instagram and Twitter, where we have a sixty second version of our show. Right, BobandBrad.com too. Yeah, I said that. Did Just you? Off it. Well, maybe take I'm... it away. Take away <laughs> Brad.com. All right, flat feet. In other words, uh, in the medical field, we call it pronators. Right. If you're pronated foot, you got a flat foot. And there's different degrees of flat feet. Uh, and usually people are kind of aware of it, but sometimes not. So we're going to clear the, clear the air and so that you have a much better idea right at home. You don't have to go in to see the doctor or the therapist. Yeah, too. we're going to show you a test you can do. Right, on your simple own. one. Yeah. yeah. So how do you get flat feet, Bob? Well, you're going to tell us about <laughs> it. <laughs> well, there's three primary reasons. One, you could be born with it. Right. It could be hereditary. Genetic or, or hereditary, one of the two. Right. right. Um, my daughter's that way. Sure. She's not really flat, but she's pretty close to, to flat. Sure. Um, and I was concerned about it for a while. I talked to the doctor, and she was born. She said, don't worry about it. Let things just go on, and she's she's doing well. She's 22 already. and There's no problem. No. Posterior tibialis muscle or the tendon. Now, that's the muscle that's back here, and it goes underneath uh, the medial, the ankle bone, the middle one, and it supports your arch from collapsing. And if you have a weak posterior tib muscle along with some other ones, but that's a primary one, that can allow your arch to flatten over time. And you can get a little tendonitis there then too. Right, yeah. So, so you give you problems. Right. And then the last one, uh, but not least, probably the most common one as we age is arthritic. Sure. Arthritic changes throughout all the bo joint bones there with weight bearing over time, not yeah, wearing proper shoes. They begin shoes. to collapse. Yeah. Uh, right. We see that in the therapy world. That's not unusual to yeah. see that. So how, how do you know? So you're saying, well, get on with the program. How right. do you know? How so we we're going to show you a simple test as long as you have, uh, you can use a, a, a grocery paper. bag. Right. Or you can use one of open. these envelopes that are colored. Vanilla usually. envelopes. Vanilla envelopes. Vanilla, yeah. And, uh, you can also probably use a white one. It would probably show up on right, YouTube, but, but not on the camera as well. So get, I'm gonna, get a pan with a little bit of water in there so your foot can sit in. About a half inch of water is all you need. You so can use warm water so it doesn't chill you. So you're going to go ahead and, and make sure the whole bottom of the foot is covered. And then I just shake it off a little bit. Yep. And then I'm going to go ahead and stand on it. Yeah, it's important that you put weight through it. You don't want to just do it seated. You got to stand up and then that'll allow... Uh, oh, look at that, Bob. Yeah. Nice job. So uh, Brad already did his, and he outlined his. Why don't you talk about yours, Brad? Right. And I'll outline mine while you're talking. So you, what you do is you look where the water makes a watermark, and then I outlined it. And you can see I am not a flat-footed person because here's my arch, okay? But I got contact here. Bob, let's let's see yours. And we'll I probably, I'm even a, probably a higher arch. Yeah, because he's just got very little contact here, right. and mine's wider. Now, if you're flat-footed, let, let me see this one. This Bob. means I have a very rigid foot. Yeah, which is not necessarily good either, because it doesn't disperse the forces as well. So. Nobody in the room had a flat foot. Right, so we, we couldn't could, find anybody yeah. with a flat foot. But you would have the outline of the watermark would be straight all the way across. It means your whole foot is touching. 
and you know that's a good way to confirm it. Again, you have to put weight on it. Right. Stand up. There's a lot of people that they, they have a decent arch until they put weight on it, and yep. then it just collapses right Ex down. Exactly so. right. So you determined you have a flat foot. Now what, Brad? Well, Bob. Then what we need to do is how are we going to correct it or uh, at least deal with it, manage it? Right. Okay. Um, characteristics of a flat foot is typically it's not rigid it's actually flaccid right. it kind of wants to collapse it doesn't have a lot of rigidity you have so a lot we, of flexibility right and you need to need to compensate with that through the footwear sure all right so what you're going to find is if you go to a store and if you've got a salesperson that really knows his footwear ask for a motion control shoe and what that means and they're typically in running shoes and I'm going to show you this shoe right here is a motion control shoe. And yeah, Liz, zoom right in on this. Okay, let's see the best two to compare. If you look at this shoe, look right through the arch. It's quite thick. And look at the color of the material. It's gray. Now that means if it's gray, they've introduced carbon into the foam, which makes it stiffer. And if you try and push your fingernail in there, it's really rigid. Even to go to white, it's a little softer. And, yeah, and this is white all the way along. Right. Although it does have a, a plastic piece in there to help give it some support. Right. So this one yeah. is a, what they call a stability shoe if you have a normal arch. Uh, but now this is an easy test. If you do the one finger test, take one finger, put it on the toe, and Pull down yeah. like this. It's a very stiff shoe. Yeah. There's very little motion. In I'll there. do the same thing here. Very yeah. easy. And when you get to lighter shoes, like a minimalist shoes, you can wrap it right around yeah, with one can, finger. You can actually twist it right around. Like this one doesn't twist very well. Yeah. But this one uh, actually, uh, which is closer to that, is can you can yeah. see you can twist it. And, and so. this one you can. It's rigid. So the rigidity of the shoe uh, helps so that your foot doesn't collapse and it's going to maintain. Now, I've seen people, uh, can you go down here, Liz? I've seen people typically in their 70s or 80s that have flat feet and they've never done anything with it right. on their feet a lot, where this part right here, the ankle, has come down to within a half an inch of the floor, and I'm not exaggerating. Right, it right, is amazing. really amazing. And those people typically have to get custom plastic AFOs just to support their feet. Very, uh, uh, you don't starts, want to have that. It starts working all the way up the chain. It starts affecting the ankle, the knees, exactly. and, you know, the hips. You know, I, I wouldn't say that outright that you're going to need motion control, Brad, right. if you have a, 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 a no arch. I mean, you might but you might need a step down from that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good point, Bob, because I have had people, I say, go to the store and uh, make get sure a motion you control. get a motion control. I used to try them on and that they've come back and they said they just didn't feel right. Yeah, they don't feel right. And that's one of the guidelines we want to emphasize. You shouldn't have to break in a shoe. Right. It should feel good immediately. Yeah. I mean, you should be in the store like, it. oh, this feels good. Right. If they're trying to convince you that it needs to be broken in, that's just a bunch of hoo -yah. Yeah, I, I disagree with that. As a matter of fact, I was just buying some shoes and that salesman, he tried to pull that on me and I said, hey, buddy, hey. <laughs> this doesn't feel good. I know if I go home with this, I'm not going to be happy. He backed off. He was yeah, nice. Because a lot of times it'll get worse. Yep. I mean, yeah. so, um, it, you know, the, the understanding is there is, like you said, uh, some shoes have from one to five that are the Rogan shoes. That, I mean, right. And that's where, you know, well, we can give them a little, because they were so helpful with me. Uh, there's a company in the Midwest, Wisconsin, Illinois, uh, Minnesota, yeah. Rogans, um, and they have a system because there's no factory standards yet. From from different shoe to different brand, right? Like, from the from the from motion like control Adidas to, to Asics. I mean, they they don't have any standard among them. Do not they? particularly, not that relates. And so this shoe co or shoe sales company has actually developed their own. The, the, one of the the head managers of it, he's a marathon runner and he's developed this because he was sick and tired of trying to educate salespeople sure. without a system so anyways uh that that's uh he went from one to five which is one uh which is one the stability i'm not uh, sure okay because i didn't get it i just uh, know sure. they have a system i didn't i didn't so spend on, that much on time one with end of the, the spectrum you have very rigid shoes for right. people who have a, a poor arch yep. and on the other end it would be me with a high arch and you'd want more of a cushion shoe right exactly so, so again 
Motion control, in theory, is what you want. But again, yeah, try it's going to be a very stiff shoe. Yep. It's going to be a heavier shoe. Yes. And, and, and they're more expensive. And they're more expensive. Yeah. And it's going to be, like you said, you can't, it's very rigid here. And there's very good arch support right, here. So right. um, if, if that doesn't work for you, take the step down. Find one that's. You may good. have to try on a, a, a number, five, yeah. six pair of shoes to get that pair that fit right. And well, what a difference got, it'll make yeah. because your your feet are very important. Yeah, I mean, that, obviously. It, it, I mean, you, it starts affecting everything you do, and you start well, without a doubt. Right. Right. So, anything else, Brad? No, Bob. I think we beat this to death. <laughs> <laughs> beat. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching.